we now see that there are three sources of stem cells. There are the embryonic stem cells, those blue stem cells that are part of a developing fetus. There are the placental stem cells, which are the placenta and the umbilical cord. And of course, all of our adults organs have stem cells in them as well. So which ones do we use in medicine? Well, for sure, we do not use the first one, the embryonic stem cell. You may recall a few years back, there was a great deal of political upheaval and controversy about the use of embryonic stem cells. Why? Because when you pluck those cells out of, those blue cells out of a developing embryo, you are in fact interfering with the development of a human life. And for all of the ethical reasons, this is very controversial and should be. Now, from a medical perspective though, we wouldn't use those cells in therapies anyhow because those cells are still undifferentiated. Remember, they, aren't, they haven't yet decided which line they're going to be a part of, which organ system they're going to be a part of. And so they have all of those options ahead of them and you don't know which direction they're going to go. So if you took some of those cells out to try to cure a liver or heal a liver and stuck them in someone's liver, you don't know that they're going to become liver cells. They could become something else. Not a good situation. So in clinical medicine, they are not used and never were. Okay, so we can just let them go for now. They are used in research purposes, but not for clinical medicine. Now, the placental cells are used, and in fact, most of what I'm going to be talking about today are um, the characteristics and the use of, a, of stem cells. These are called mesenchymal stem cells that are extracted out of or harvested from umbilical cords. Now, there's no controversy there at all because after the baby is born, and then the next delivery, in fact, is the placenta and the cord. And those are considered medical waste. They're going to be incinerated and, and simply disposed of, which is a shame because obviously stem cells are in those tissues and they're very valuable. So with the mother's permission, they can be donated to science or given to a cord bank, okay, for preservation in case the mother and the child need those cells in the future, or they can be used for medications or for treatments such as we're going to be talking about today. So that's the second source of cells, of stem cells. And then the adult stem cells. Remember, we have them in our own organs. Now, you wouldn't want to extract stem cells from someone's liver. That would be painful and not very efficient. So the three places where we can get stem cells out of, out of a human body efficiently, effectively, without causing too much disruption or pain, our bone marrow, you can drill into someone's bone and, re and retract or extract the bone marrow, which is filled with stem cells. Not the most comfortable procedure, I assure you, but it can be done easily. Um, you can simply remove someone's blood and extract stem cells from somebody's blood. Very easy to do. And of course, the fat. There's a lot of stem cells in fat. Those stem cells happen to be dormant, but there's a lot of them in there, and they're commonly used in clinical medicine. About the adult stem cells, what do you do with them after you've harvested them, after you've extracted them from your patient? The patient comes into the office, they want, for instance, a stem cell injection in their knee because they have a banged up knee. You take some of their fat, and the first thing you have to do is clean that fat. So you harvest them, then you clean the fat, and extract and distill out the stem cells, okay? and then you prepare them in whatever way is necessary to be re-injected, re-infused into the patient. The concerns about that are as follows. Obviously, the discomfort of the procedure of getting them out. If you're extracting the cells from someone's belly, you're going to bruise them. Okay? And it's not the most comfortable procedure, though with anesthetic, you know, it can be, it, it can be, um, it can be comfortable. All right? But someone's going to bruise and there's going to be some discomfort afterwards in the healing. There's always the possibility of causing an infection from the area from which you've extracted them. There's also the issue of contamination. During the time in the procedure where you are distilling them and cleansing them, preparing them, what if some contaminant got in there? And the last and one of the most important in my mind is the fact that these are stem cells of an adult. This is, let's say, a 50-year-old patient. Well, they have 50-year-old stem cells in there, okay? And they are not nearly as potent, not nearly with as much potential and vitality as the young stem cells that we extract from umbilical cord. Now, there's a lot of science behind this, but let me, let me just say briefly that as we age, 
two things happen to our stem cells. Number one, we lose the numbers of them. In fact, from a brand new baby to 18 years old, you lose about 60% of your stem cells. And from 18 years old to 30 year old, you lose another 25% of them. So by the time you're 50, 60, and 70, you're down to like 5% of the amount of stem cells you had when you were a baby. Not only that, but the stem cells that you have are not nearly as potent and as functional and as eager, let's put it that way, to do the job that they're supposed to do. So they lose functionality, in addition to the fact that we're losing great amount of numbers. So the stem cells that you extract out of a patient who has that knee issue is not going to be as vital as umbilical cord stem cells. So here's, an, here's the science behind it. To give you a very clear example, if we take one of those you know, um, of stem cells out of someone's fat and we put it in a petri dish and nourish it with all the things it likes to eat and be happy, in 30 days that one cell is going to become 200 cells. Not bad, 200 out of one. But that same umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cell put in the same petri dish with the same nutrients in one month's time will become over a billion cells. 200 to a billion. That's the difference between the vitality of an older person's cell, not that 50 is old, it's just older, versus a young nascent cell from an umbilical cord whose entire life and vitality is still ahead of it. And the good way to imagine this, since we talk about billions all the time and we kind of don't really know how much a billion is, is if you took 200 quarters, like the 200 cells from an adult, and stacked them up, they'd be 14 inches tall. If you took a billion quarters and stacked them up, you'd be over a thousand miles tall. Thousand miles versus 14 inches. So this is a huge difference in their vitality and their potential and their capacity to regenerate and bring new life to a patient. Okay, so the umbilical cord mesenchymal stem cell. How does it work? What are its characteristics? How does it function? Number one, when you infuse them into someone's body, those cells will home to damaged tissue. And we know this because you can, you can, in a special way, put markers on those cells. And if someone has a damaged heart and you infuse those cells into their body, you can see them migrating directly to the damaged tissue. It's brilliant. It's mysterious how they do this, but it's part of the mystery and the, the magic and the miracle of our physiology. Now, when they get to their destination, these stem cells, what they do is they latch on to the microvasculature, the tiny little capillaries of that organ. And when they are attached there, there's one thing they don't do, and there's something that they do do. What they don't do is become that organ tissue. Now, along the way, earlier, I've said how stem cells will duplicate or replicate themselves, and then the other cell will become the tissue that needed to be replaced. These mesenchymal stem cells from the umbilical cord don't do that. It's called engrafting. They do latch on to the little tiny capillaries in that organ, but they don't become that organ tissue. Okay, so what do they do? They, in fact, release this magic soup of these signaling messaging molecules. Remember those little vesicles that were on the surface of the cell? Well, those little bubbles, they, they pop, and this soup comes out, and it's filled with these incredible cytokines which cause massive regeneration of the tissue. And in fact, one of the things that that soup does is stimulate the native stem cells in that organ to do what they used to do when you were a baby. So all this magic happens because of what the cells release. Now, Dr. Kaplan, who was a brilliant scientist who discovered these mesenchymal stem cells and umbilical cords just a few years ago, he named them, of course, and defined them as mesenchymal stem cells, MSC. But this soup that they release, this magic soup, is such a powerful element of why these cells are so powerful in our physiology that he is playing around with the idea of changing MSC from mesenchymal stem cells to medicinal signaling cells, also MSC. So that's how they work. Mm -hmm.